Hello, it's Dr. Rhonda Johnson, and today is Wednesday, Inauguration Day, January 20th, 2021. And today I devote my message to all the healthcare workers who are on the front line taking care of patients with coronavirus infections. Now, this is a message from my heart today. It's not a scientific message. These are words that are spoken from my heart. There's hardly a day that passes when I don't receive news about someone who I know who has COVID or someone who is a family member or a friend who has COVID. I always prefer those type of updates about just having COVID. And people ask me, can I talk to the family? As opposed to getting a call or a text bearing the news of someone who's COVID infection has claimed their lives. Recently, I attended a virtual webinar. It was titled A Conversation with the Community about COVID-19 Vaccines and hosted by the University of Maryland School of Public Health. It was an excellent meeting. And as I listened and heard and listened and heard people from all over the United States who gave their heartfelt opinions about the impact of this pandemic on their lives and the urgency to educate the community around COVID-19 vaccines. And these messages were very powerful to me. And although I don't own any rights to any of these messages, I'm sharing some of the opinions that were heard in this public forum. It was public, so I figured I can use it. And even though today is inauguration day, I just want to be mindful of the fact that the coronavirus hasn't taken this day off. And the healthcare workers taking care of the sick haven't taken this day off. And so I'm proceeding with this message. So these are some of the thoughts that were shared by people attending this meeting. Life is so fragile. Life is just so very fragile. And I appreciate how fragile life is now because I've lost so many family members to COVID. Another person said, it is a miracle that I am still here. It is a miracle that you are still here. It is a miracle that we are all still here. Another person said, this vaccine side effects pale in comparison to the disease. Another person said, I had COVID and I survived. I was so very sick. It's a miracle that I survived. Another person said, it's a miracle that a vaccine was developed. Another person said, the more that this virus stays in our communities, the more people that are likely to get sick and die. Another person said, don't be afraid of side effects from the vaccine. This is what your body does when it's fighting infection. And you would rather have your immune system respond to the vaccine than have to fight for your life in response to the virus infection. Another person said, we need to get the message out there to people and say, let's all get vaccinated so we can help save our communities. Another person said, Push past the fear. Keep pressing on, even if you are afraid. Another person said, don't worry about signing consent for the vaccine. If you get sick and are admitted to the hospital, or if you're sick on your deathbed, you may not get to sign your own consent form anyway. Another person said the vaccine is a means to have community immunity. And when we have community immunity, our kids can go back to school. Our jobs will open back up. Our physical health will improve. And so will our mental health. Another person who was a pastor said, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things unseen. These vaccines give us hope that we can get to the other side of this pandemic. 
even though we may not know what's going to happen 10 years from now, we know what is happening now in terms of the sickness and dying. We must have the faith to believe. Another person said, once we get out of this pandemic, we can see our families, hug our families, and come together again. We can put the heart and soul back into our communities. And another person said, we want the facts, the good news and the bad news. We will make up our own minds. Again, these were words expressed by regular people who were on this webinar. Powerful words, vo voices of real people. You know, I watched the inauguration today like millions of other people, and I watched a lot of the commentary. And one of the commentators said, we have to face a world of truth about the state we are in. Another one said, if all of the 401,000 people that died from this pandemic were buried in Arlington National Cemetery, there would not be enough room to bury all these bodies here. Folks, I hope this narrative changes. I do hope people will push back their fears. I hope that people will face the truth about the state of this pandemic that we're in and not continue to lie to themselves. Many of our hearts are heavy. We are weary from grief. We're weary from this pandemic. We're weary from isolation. We're weary from the loss of loved ones, loss of jobs, and for some, the basic necessities of life. Folks, I believe that we can do this. We only need 70% to reach community immunity. I'm not gonna call it herd immunity anymore because people aren't a herd of cows or animals. I'm going to call it community immunity. I heard this term on that webinar yesterday. The truth is, and the truth of the science, this part is science, if enough of us become immune, the virus will die out. There will simply be no one left in our communities to infect. This is the ultimate starvation for this virus. Now that assumes that the virus doesn't significantly mutate. You know, as bad as this pandemic is, there will be other pandemics. The world has seen smallpox pandemics, flu pandemics, and the HIV AIDS pandemic, which in 2017 claimed almost a million lives. But we have another pandemic amongst us. It's the pandemic of misinformation and fear that are plagues in their own right and even harder to fight. I was so inspired by this history-making inaugural young poet, Amanda Gorman, today. And to paraphrase some of her beautiful words, she says, where can we find light in this never-ending shade? There is always light, if only we see it. There is always light, if only we are brave enough to be it. So folks, I hope that we can change the narrative on this COVID-19 vaccine. We need to welcome this vaccine. We need to talk to our doctors and make sure there's no medical reasons why we can't get this life-saving vaccine. This is my message today, spoken from my heart. My views are my own. Stay safe, folks, and have a blessed day.